Good evening, ladies and gents. We are going to do a little... Well, I'm going to try and not shake that table here. Maybe I can keep the camera from jumping around. We're going to do a little evening reading, and we are going to do something a little bit different here today. Um, when I was doing a lot of children's teaching, children as a children's pastor for a while, um, one of the curriculums we used to use sometimes was the do a What's in the Bible. The do a What's in the Bible... And it was fun, so I was kind of thinking we might do something different, uh, or something similar to that, I should say. Do a, what's in the Bible, or is that really in the Bible? Because there's a lot of stuff that people talk about and misquote uh, commonly, and I find talking to a lot of people that they really don't even know what's in here. People don't read it nearly as much as they should, because they understand what people have told them, whether it's their friends or their parents or their pastors or whatever. They, they understand that more than they understand what this actually says. So we're going to take a little look at something if you guys want to join me, with me for a little bit here. We're going to read over a little bit and then we're going to talk about it and we're going to point out some key facts and help you guys maybe get a little bit better understanding of what it does actually say in these passages right here and what it doesn't say. Excuse me. Without further ado, we will jump right into it. So, we are reading Acts 10. Feel free to read right along. Grab your Bible. I encourage you guys to actually read for yourself. Don't take what I have to say as fact. Just like don't take what anybody else has to say as fact. Read it yourself. We all need to read it our, our, our own selves. So, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what is called the Italian Regiment, a devout man, and one who was feared, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa, and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Reading along? Okay. I'll try not to just stare at the book. Dun, dun, dun! He is lodging with, <coughs> excuse me, Simeon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter up in the house to, went up in the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw, set, saw heaven opened, and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, Lord, for I have not eaten anything common or unclean. And a, vo and a voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. And this was done three times. Key thing we'll come back to in a little bit. And the object was taken up into heaven again. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what the vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simeon's house and stood before the gate. They called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit uh, said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Key thing there. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he who you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear the words from you. 
Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the following day they entered Caesarea, and now Cornelius was waiting for them. He had called together his relatives, his close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down his feet at his feet, and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. And he talked with him. He, uh, as he talked with him, he went in uh, and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But uh, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I ask then, for what reason have you sent me? So Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. At the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothes and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house with Simeon the Tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, his, uh, he is Lord of all. The word, you, uh, the word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached. And we're, we can continue on from there. But we're, right now, we're going to jump back and take a look at a few, a few key things in here. So, Peter was praying up on the roof, and he gets the vision from God. So, the voice came to um, the sheet was let down, all the wild beasts, creeping things, and the birds of the air. And the voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Lord, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. So, we've established right there that he hasn't eaten anything unclean. He is still eating uh, what is considered food. A lot of people use this passage right here to try and say, see, th this says eat, everything in the scriptures about what you're supposed to eat and what you're not supposed to eat has gone away. You can eat whatever you want. It was God showed Peter right there. But that's not what exactly what's being talked about. Because what we see is God shows Peter, Peter does, and then Peter tells the people he did because God showed him. There's nothing about him going and killing and eating the stuff. God used an analogy because, let's see, he's praying and he's hungry and, <coughs> excuse me, God will refer to people as animals. Like his sheep, separating the sheep from the goats. He will refer to his people as sheep. So he showed all, all the animals, excuse me, all the animals of the earth. Wild beasts, creeping things, birds of the air, and the voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, No, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice spoke to him a second time, What God has cleansed you must not call common. And this was done three times. Now, how many people showed up outside there looking for him? There was three, coincidence or not, there was three people that showed up, God showed him three times. Yes, that is also the number of completion. But he showed him three times. And now when Peter, um, let's see, we'll jump down here. Uh, while Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So now he's telling him to go with them, not doubting, so God told him, don't call anything I've made clean, unclean. God, the people showed up. God said, go with them, 
don't doubt. Um, so he went down with them. He's the one for they speak. And then he's talking about Cornelius and the centurion. And then they once they get back to his house in Joppa, or, or they from Joppa, um, and the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them, and he had called to his relatives and close friends. Peter was coming in. Cornelius tried to worship him. Peter, Peter lift him up, lifted him up and said, I am also a man. And he talked to him and went in and found many come together. And he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So, jumping back to here, what God has cleansed you must not call common. So what what is being talked about here as far as common or unclean. Peter just told the people what they were talking about. I should not call any man common or unclean. It was unlawful for a Jewish man to keep company. So it was unlawful for any Jewish man to even come over here to Cornelius' house to spend time with him, to commune with him. Any of that, it was unlawful. Jewish people would not do that. But, when you jump all the way back, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man, one who feared God and all his household, who gave alms generally to the people and prayed to God always. So here he, he is doing things that, that should be done. He's praying to God. He fears God, and God sends an angel and talks to him. Go talk to Peter. Have someone go get Peter. Peter... He, God showed up where Peter's at and said, hey, it, it gave him a, a shock and awe thing. He's like, look. And Peter's like, certainly not. I've never. And then he showed him three times. And then God told him, uh, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. And then the people showed up and God told him, go with those people because I have sent them. Don't doubt. And then he gets over here and he tells the people clearly I'm here. It's, like, it's unlawful for me to even be here. But God has told me, don't call any person common or unclean. So, the whole, this right here, it's talking about people. The, these are people. This is God bringing the non-Jew into Israel, God's people. The, the, the Gentiles, those of us that were not born of Jewish blood, that are grafted in this Right here is an account of showing where that happens. We uh, we left off here a little while ago. We'll jump back uh, into it. Let's see. Peter was telling them about God. Uh, so how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. We'll jump back in at 38 here. And with power and went along doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. Tell him, or to, to him all the prophets witness that, through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out onto the Gentiles also." For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and they asked him to stay a few days. Now going back through this, what are we talking about? Is there anywhere in here where it shows Peter killing and eating things that were considered not? clean so this is talking this is talking about food right so where in here did he go and eat kill the animals that were considered not clean that you shouldn't eat 
and eat them. And where where did that happen? Because God gave him direction, and then he did it, and then he explained that he did it because God told him. Nothing in here is about food. So read it again. Read it again, please. If you are to the point where you want to know why things don't line up, why everything taught in the modern church doesn't quite match up, and why, you, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper, you're wondering what else is there. It's like this seems a little superficial. A lot of it is because if you are a Christian, much of what you need to know isn't taught in church. And there's a good portion of stuff that's taught in the modern church that just isn't biblical. There's a lot of denominational things that are taught, not biblical things. So if, if you want to draw closer to God, if you want to meet God in a way that you haven't before, if you're doing this Christian walk and everything seems, it's there, everything's like, there just, need, there just seems to be something more. It's like, what is it? What is it more? It's like, it just seems like something's missing. It's because something is missing. The depth of the understanding and the relationship with God is completely misunderstood by many, many Christians and many flavors of Christianity. The doctrines, it doesn't all match up. And if you don't dig deep yourself, you're going to miss out on the most important part of it. And you're going to be left feeling kind of an empty what what is it why why does it go to church and go through the church emotions and it's like there's just there's, there's something more there's like there's something missing and i just can't put my finger on it what is that essence of something it's because there is an essence of something and there is something missing like there is so much more to it but modern christianity on a church level so much of it keeps it superficial. Tea time. It's getting late into the evening and it's been a lot long, busy week, weekend stuff. But there is much, much more to it. So this, Acts 10, has nothing to do with food. Now if you want to debate whether or not we should eat or shouldn't eat certain things, we can do that. I'm up for a debate. But this scripture right here has nothing to do with it. It doesn't... Read it again for yourself. Use your brain. Pray. Read it. Are you ready to make the step to go from understanding and believing what people have told you or to really dig into this, this word, really dig into the Bible, that what is here that I'm missing? Because if the majority of what you know about the Bible comes from Sunday sermons and what your friends have told you and maybe what your parents have told you, unfortunately, you're missing a lot. There's so much more for you and a good portion of what you've been told is not necessarily accurate. That's just kind of the way it goes because a lot of it is just parroted information. Somebody tells somebody and they tell somebody and then they tell somebody else and then they tell somebody else but they don't actually know it. It's sharing what I've heard. What you've heard and what you know and what you learned for yourself are not at all the same thing. I mean, you're edging on sharing rumors because you're telling what somebody telling somebody else what somebody else told you, but you don't actually know it. If you haven't actually studied it and haven't actually learned it, you don't really know it as well as you should. So... If you guys would like to join me and we can continue on with these, we've got a lot to go through. So I might start a, a evening series here and we'll go through and we'll pick one little piece of information, a little bit of scripture, and we'll go through and we'll break it down and dissect it one thing at a time. So right now, Acts 10, I strongly urge you guys sit down and read it for yourself. Acts 10 is about people. It is about bringing the Gentiles into God's family 
with the Jews. It has nothing to do with food. It has nothing to do with what we eat. So please dig into it and we will continue this another day. Comment, message me something, questions, anything specifics you want to go over, send them on over. I'll be happy to discuss just about any time. I'm a busy person, but I will get to it for sure. So, read it for yourself. Don't take, don't take somebody else's word for it. Don't take my word for it. Dig into it and see what it really says. And my phone is going crazy here. Does nobody know I'm trying to record a video? <sighs> oh well. But, as always, pray for the best, prepare for the worst, and remember, love is a verb. Good night. If I can finish this thing.